Welcome to Food Science Peeps. In this video, I will introduce F value and show you how to estimate spoilage probability and also how to estimate lethality of a thermal process using improved general method. Thermal death time is known as F value. Let's look at the example. F with the subscript of 115 degrees Celsius and superscript of 8 degrees Celsius represents the time required to achieve a stated microbial population reduction with the Z value of 8 degrees Celsius at 115 degrees Celsius. F value can be expressed by as multiple of D values given that the survivor curve is in first order. F value at a given temperature for a thermal resistant constant Z can be denoted by F with subscript which indicates the processing temperature and superscript which indicates the Z value. F value is the total time in minutes required to achieve a stated reduction in a microbial population under specific condition. F with subscript of 121 and superscript of 10 which represents the time required for a given microbial spore population reduction with a Z value of 10 degrees Celsius at 121 degrees Celsius can be denoted by F note and is known as reference thermal death time. Next, let's talk about spoilage probability. In food industry, food scientists need to design the food process to extend shelf life and prevent spoilage of food product. Spoilage probability is important to estimate the number of spoiled containers within a total batch of processed product. It is used in process design in order to achieve desired effectiveness and results of food processing. Now, I will show you how to determine spoilage probability of a processed product. Look at the first equation here. N note indicates the initial spoilage microbial population whereas the N indicates the desired final microbial population for a thermal death rate time of F. In the second equation, R has been added. R indicates the number of containers exposed to the food process. So, the total microbial load at the beginning of the process is R N note. To achieve the probability of only one survivor from the microbial population of all processed containers, the Rn becomes 1. And the equation will becomes log Rn note minus log 1 equals to F per D. Rearrange the equation, log Rn note divided by 1 in bracket equals to F per D and so on. Then, and to log to get Rn note equals to 10 to the power of F per D. As I mentioned in the previous slide, F can be expressed a multiples of D value. The F per D here is actually the number of log cycle reduction. When we rearrange and get the final equation, 1 over R equals to N note divided by 10 to the power of F per D. We are actually getting the survivor population by dividing the initial population N note by the population being eliminated, which is 10 to the power of F per D. So, we can get 1 per R which represents the spoilage probability, that is, one container with spoilage from the total number of containers processed, R. We can also use this equation to estimate F, which is the thermal death time required to achieve certain spoilage probability if the initial population and the D value are given. The condition for using this equation is that the survivor curve should follow first order model. Let's look at a simple example. Given that the initial population is 500, how many spoiled containers are there after 4 millions of containers are treated with a 9D process? Firstly, we need to write out what is the process and what we are finding. Then, use the equation we've just learned. Since it's a 9D process, we substitute the F per D with 9. And fill the initial population with 500. We are finding the number of spoiled container among the 4 millions containers. So, here comes the equation. The left hand side of this equation is actually representing the spoilage probability after the 9D process while the right hand side is representing the number of spoiled container among the total batch of processed container. Then, just a simple calculation then we can get the answer. The answer is 2. Next, let's see how to estimate lethality of a process using the improved general method. This general method has been introduced by Professor Paul Singh in his book which is Introduction to Food Engineering while the Impoved General Method has been demonstrated in his tutorial video. To use the general method, we need to have thermal death time, F for the microbial population considered at all temperatures during the preservation process. Just now, we've seen this equation in the part of spoilage probability. 
If you've learned about z value, you must already familiar with this equation. Since f can be expressed as multiples of d. By replacing d in this equation with f, we will get this new equation. And to log the equation then we will get this equation. When we know the thermal death time, f with subscript of r, at a reference temperature, t with subscript of r, we can find the thermal death time, f at any temperature, t. This equation can be defined as lethal rate. In other words, it indicates the proportion of the thermal death time at temperature t to the thermal death time at a reference temperature t with subscript of r. By plotting lethal rate versus time, we will get the lethal rate curve. The area under this lethal rate curve is known as lethality, L. We can calculate the area under the lethal rate curve to get lethality by integrating the lethal rate equation at each time interval and summing up. However, this is very time-consuming and not practical. So, we will use the improved general method to get the lethality of a process in spreadsheet or Excel. Let's learn this method by solving an example. Estimate the lethality at 121.1 degrees Celsius of target microorganism which has z-value of 9 degrees Celsius and thermal death time at 121.1 degrees Celsius of 3 minutes. Now, we're given the raw data of heat penetration test of a thermal process which are the time and temperature. The first step of this method is to calculate the lethal rate. I've already given you the formula here. Lethal rate is equal to 10 to the power of temperature minus the reference temperature divided by Z value. The next step is to calculate the area under lethal rate curve. Get the average of first and second lethal rate and multiply it with the time interval. After that, sum up the areas at each time interval then we will get the lethality. Another way to calculate the area under curve or the lethality is calculate lethal rate followed by cumulative lethal rate. and then multiply the final cumulative lethal rate with the time interval. And you will get the same answer. That's all for today's lesson. I hope it's useful for you. Thanks for watching, bye.